Hollywood, California. The movies. The high life. The wealth. From rags to riches for a select few. But not every Hollywood story is the same. Take Rowdy's, for instance. Rowdy was rescued from an animal shelter about four years ago. He came into the shelter as a stray, and normally they would keep him for seven days. And if the dog is not adopted in those seven days, then they would um, be destroyed. Rowdy is a bizarre looking fellow. So odd, in fact, that when he was in the shelter, nobody wanted to adopt him. It looked like the end was near. That is, until animal trainer Christy Mealy saw something in Rowdy that no one else ever had. I thought Rowdy had a lot of potential as a movie star because of his looks, first of all. He's very unusual looking, very striking. Uh, he also just had a great attitude, very happy-go-lucky, very outgoing. Rowdy was an exceptionally fast learner. Within a month, he was doing all of what we call movie dog basics. Back up. We do hand signals in case we have to work silently. Um, sometimes we can't speak over dialogue, so he knows hand signals as well as vocal signals. So smart, so charming, so well trained. Why wasn't the phone ringing? Could it be his looks? The truth was, even with all his training, Rowdy was never going to be just another pretty face. He was, he was almost too unique looking. Um, the eyes, uh, the markings, people thought they were, I think, too much, even though he was very well trained. But neither Rowdy nor Christy gave up. They went to auditions, they schmoozed, they did a couple of commercials. Not enough work to keep them in dog biscuits. Then they got a break. Nickelodeon, a cable channel for kids, was looking for a dog. Producer Tommy Lynch led the search. I needed a dog that would become the Nickelodeon dog. And the best description I ever had of Nickelodeon was it was pizza for kids. It was everything mixed together, so I wanted to find a dog like that. Rowdy got the part, and what a part. He became the star of 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd. 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd is about a boy who was a 15-year-old boy who was the meanest boy in town. He was the bully that we all knew. And one day, he turned into a dog, and he has to do 100 good deeds before he can become a boy again. Funny looks, weird face, what are you talking about? This dog's beautiful, beautiful. He became the right dog because of his eyes. He has these incredibly good eyes that stare at you, and they have knowledge in them, and he has a sensitivity. He always was watching everything that was going on. Rowdy's face worked for Nickelodeon, especially since it was going to have to do some extraordinary things. A dog's got to do what a dog's got to do. I needed kids to really feel like this dog was really talking and really alive. Being a star is hard work for Rowdy and his two trainers, Christy and Tom. Rowdy has had to learn something that every actor needs to know, how to go to where the cameras will have him in focus. It's called finding your mark. These are some plastic leaves that we have glued together, and then I put tape on that backside to hold it in place. We call this a mark, and it's got a scent that Rowdy knows, so he uh, smells it among all the other leaves and grass. Basically what he has to do is start in one area, then I'm gonna show him the second mark. Good, stay, good, good. And then he has to go back to the other one. Go more. Good, stay, good. And this means good, so he knows that he did it correctly. This is just dog kibble. I have to gauge what I'm using by what he's doing. Kibble is fine for quiet stuff. I bring out better treats when he has to look really excited or crazy. 
because he can't think sometimes if it's too good. It would be like waving a thousand dollar bill in front of our faces. Is he standing or sitting? He was not very good in the beginning at being on sets. Things frightened him. Loud things banging, um, just things moving behind him. And of course he had to learn to, to not be afraid of things like that and to focus on the trainer and trust. And I would set up situations where I would be working him and, and making a very positive situation, but I would have someone gradually start making noise and then getting it louder and louder and louder until he was conditioned to ignore it. The life of a TV star isn't all puppy chow and doing lunch. There's work to be done. Each episode has a different set of challenges, like getting used to a scary prop. You know, this is the second session on this net. We're starting out kind of... Um, Simply here, because we don't want to, we want him to like the net. We don't want it to be negative. So basically, we would first just put it over his back and let him know that it's okay. Good. Because you see a scene in a movie where a dog gets netted. How do they do that? That looks so cool. Well, basically, if you teach him that the net is not a bad thing, stay good. And he gets rewarded for it, then he'll think the net is just fine. Good. Stay. Good. Speak. Speak. Good. Like he's struggling. This is simple. This is simple. But once they lay in sound effects, it's gonna look horrible. Remember, Rowdy's a talking dog. Although instead of having to learn his lines, Rowdy's had to learn to keep his mouth shut so that a computer can make his mouth move. So I ask him to hold his little stick. Hold it. Good. Stay. Hold it. Stay. Stay good, stay. Mark, hold it, stay good. Rowdy the master makes it look easy. He can keep his lips sealed, find his mark, and turn in the right direction. All this for a piece of kibble. There must be more to life than kibble. And then when he's very good, all right, he gets to play with his ball. Rowdy's day on set starts early, but top billing has its privileges. Rowdy has an air-conditioned dressing room. Rowdy has two cages that he rests in during the day. He has a special diet that he's on. Rowdy is definitely the star. But in this business, even a star has to wait around. Rowdy would just love to work all day. Just tell me what to do. Give me something to do. I'm happy. Go ahead, relax. Relax while you can. I don't know. It's just he's a strange dog. It's hard to explain. He's odd. Like here, I'm petting him. Most dogs would just be melting. Oh, I just love this. He just wants to get down and do something. He really doesn't care to be standing here, sitting here. He would really like to do something. We're going to have fun today, right, Rowdy? Yes, we are. But Rowdy's day has started on the wrong paw. Three big scenes to do, and already something's gone wrong. Somebody ate the prop food. The scene requires Bill, father, to be preparing a sandwich, and Rowdy's sitting there, and he loves Rowdy so much that he gives him a piece of pastrami instead of putting it on the sandwich. And the prop food was in the refrigerator, and somebody ate it. It was marked props. <laughs> so, so they're out buying more pastrami and sandwich material. Well, finally, the scene can be shot. Rowdy's part looks easy but it takes concentration and discipline to take direction while you watch a piece of pastrami float by. That's a cut. But that's what being a professional is all about. Time for the next big scene. This is a hard one. It requires Rowdy to look like he's using a computer. It's a physically difficult position for a dog to hold, and Christy knows it. Good. Are we close? Because I don't yes, want to put him up close. here until we're ready. That's looking good. Okay, because that's going to hurt his back to do it too, too long. So as long as we, l I let him come down in between. Assistant okay. dog trainer Tom Roach knows Christie's first concern is for Rowdy. If we're asked to do something for a shot that's really not nice to do to the dog or not fair to the dog, Christy will kind of say, well, we need to do this another way or find a compromise. And because she never puts the dog in a position where he's really uncomfortable, um, the dog... Well, really will do whatever she asks him to shot? do because he's got that trust with her. That works there. Okay, stay. With a carefully placed piece of food, Christy gets Rowdy to look 
where the cameraman yeah, wants him to look. Stay. Just no, a bit of movie magic monitor. that the audience will never see. Perfection. And cutting. And now it's time for the day's hardest scene. And this one's going to take a really long time to set up. Since in the TV business there's a lot of hurry up and wait, most of the crew have things to occupy their minds. It's harder on Rowdy. There's nothing much for him to do except lie around and twiddle his paws. It has been a slow day for us. Um, got here at 8 and worked till 11. Rowdy gets bored and gets over anxious and then he overacts. <laughs> so I have to calm him down. Like most stars, Rowdy is kept away from the hot lights for as long as possible. That means using a stuffed stand-in, at least for the time it takes the crew to adjust the lighting and line up the cameras. He's supposed to jump in the window and hit a mark, and he won't be able to see me in the beginning, so he'll come in blind to the mark. Thank you very much, buddy. We're looking out the door. We need to make sure... This is the toughest challenge of the day. Rowdy has to endure getting mud on his paws, then jump through a window, find his mark, and make it look like he's being dragged out of the room. And he has to do this on cue and ignore all go. the noise and chaos of a TV set. Roll and action! The take wasn't perfect. Rowdy didn't struggle enough when he was being dragged out. They'll have to do it again. So if you just go up gently this time, take his collar, I'm going to call him so he's struggling, and you put him out. Take two. Perfectly done. Such a pro. Working with Rowdy is working with Hollywood's finest. Rowdy is basically, he's a champ. He always shows up on time, he hits his marks, and he knows his lines. Not bad for the ugly dog who nobody wanted. Rowdy proves that even in Hollywood, looks aren't everything. South Africa has a lively waterfront that's wall to wall with restaurants. And Heidi's beats the competition with a highly unusual employee. Wizard, the friendly, charming, and hairy maitre d' attracts the customers and then sees to their needs. Wizard works for Heidi Vollmer, the owner of Heidi's Cafe. After a car accident, Heidi was paralyzed from the waist down. She got Wizard as a service dog. As it turns out, his skills go far beyond straight service. Not many dogs can carry food without a sniff or taste. This golden retriever will indeed retrieve for Heidi. He uses his nose and teeth in ways that would seem impossible to lesser dogs and to skeptical humans. Wizard was just what Heidi needed. Um, once you lose your, your feet and your legs, you need an extra helping hand, and that's what Wizard is. He loves to be of assistance when I'm going around my daily rounds, going to the post office. At home, he's the housekeeper. Wizard works all day, all night with me. Um, having a, a service dog means you have a dog on call 24 hours a day. Good boy, thank you. Wizard helps Heidi keep her strength up 
by doing what may appear to be small, easy tasks, unless you're reaching from a wheelchair. Whereas it's a star boy at doing the washing, he'll get every last pair of socks or underpants, whatever's stuck in the, in the bottom of the washing machine. Heidi got Wizard when he was 18 months old. He'd already had his six months of service dog training, and he immediately was able to fill Heidi's needs. Often, the job is hardly demanding, but the hours are long, and sometimes a nap would be nice. Hey, and fall asleep. There was a time when Heidi didn't need Wizard, a time when life was fun and games for an athletic young woman. After the accident, life was tough to adjust, from being an able-bodied person, being active, being very physical, um, and all of a sudden, you're dumped in a wheelchair. The day they put the wheelchair next to my bed, I felt, can I handle this? Do I want to sit in this wheelchair for the rest of my life? Determined to take control of her new life, Heidi bought a hand-operated car and remained independent. Wizard fit right into her plan. He took over as many jobs as he could. But Wizard brought something else to Heidi, something she hadn't anticipated. He broke down the barriers between the lady in the wheelchair and the people around her. If I look back to my life before Wizard, it was very lonely. It's not nice having people stare at you and watching every move you make, but now it's, wow, look at the dog. And immediately the focus is on Wizard. And it takes the focus away from me and my disability. Heidi has discovered how an animal opens life up. Wizard's a magnet for people and a conversation starter. Heidi also found another dimension to Wizard's abilities. Sure, he helps Heidi get around, but he also gives her unconditional acceptance and love. Wizard backs me up emotionally if I have an off day where I'm feeling low or down or miserable. He's ah, there for me see. and Come, he feels for me. I've had my caffeine kick for the day. Is the that... relationship I have with Wizard is totally yeah. unique and special. It, it goes beyond all boundaries. Um, dogs are unique and they really care for you and feel for you the way a human being does. They've become inseparable in the six years they've been together. When Heidi goes sailing, Wizard goes too. He doesn't need to be there. Sailing a boat is one of the few things he can't do. But Heidi wants Wizard there. Having a dog like a service dog becomes part of you. He becomes an extension of my life. And uh, if I have a day without him, I'm really lost. But having Wizard by my side has made this person in a wheelchair be a lot more loving and caring, who isn't hesitant to go out into society, who isn't hesitant to show the world that life goes on. San Francisco Bay landmarks, Alcatraz, the beautiful skyline, the Golden Gate Bridge. Now they're joined by a pair of new attractions, the baseball stadium and Rio, the amazing baseball retriever. Welcome to Pacific Bell Park, the new home of your San Francisco Giants. There's the California sun, there's the California fun, and of course, there are always plenty of dogs. Hot dogs and the four-footed variety as well. These dogs are here precisely because the stadium is so close to water. No, they don't play ball, they go and fetch them. Because at this baseball stadium, if a batter really gets a piece of the ball, it ends up in the drink. And that's where this crack brigade of Portuguese water dogs comes in. These dogs just love to jump in the water. Not yet had a chance to see our Portuguese water dogs in action. 
San Francisco, San Franciscans pride themselves in being very unorthodox and doing unusual things. So this was a, a perfect fit with that, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. The dogs are part of BARC, which stands for Baseball Aquatic Retriever Corps. Rio is the captain of the team. He works with his owner, Pam Marcus. I don't think Rio realized how popular he is. <laughs> I think he just enjoys being out here. He likes the attention the fans give him. Rio comes by his swimming naturally. The Portuguese water dog was bred to help fishermen with their nets and gear until they got replaced by fancier equipment. These dogs almost became extinct in 1972 because of commercialization of fishing, and so they really didn't have a job. The breed was revived in the U.S., good for the dogs and good for baseball. But all this isn't just to save baseballs or please the fans. Rio and his team are helping out their fellow animals. They're raising money for Pets in Need, a Bay Area animal shelter. And since there aren't that many out-of-the-park homers, there's lots of time to do charity work. People seem happy to pay five bucks to throw a baseball and then watch as Rio and his team expertly fetch them back out. And it's all working very well. The Bark team has made Pets in Need famous in the Bay Area. They've managed to double their adoptions every month since the program started. Baseball is mostly a waiting game. But every so often, a batter squares off and just whacks that ball. And then it's showtime for Rio and his team as they plunge into action. And all this retrieving is paying off. A hefty check for $5,000 is donated by the San Francisco Giants, thanks to Rio and the Bark team.